There we go. My mic's on. Okay. News on 6 brought to you by Jim Norton's T-Town Chevrolet. It's Haunt Appliance's 12-month price guarantee sale, where this Saturday and Sunday, we mark everything down so low that we guarantee those prices for one full year, and we give you a year interest-free to pay for it. Lower than Black Friday, lower than any other price for one full year. Mullen Plumbing encourages you not to ignore leaking pipes or clogged drain. Number three, today we are talking about your money and your future and how you can pick a roadmap that can help you reach your financial goals. Mikey Mangum has been waiting here patiently, the <laughs> vice president of Inspire Financial Group in Tulsa. Mikey, welcome to News on 6 at 9 a.m. Thanks for having me. So first time on the program, let's start off by... Um, who you are, just your background, mm -hmm. and how you got interested in finance and decided this is what you wanted to do. Absolutely, yeah, I actually grew up in the UK. I moved to Tulsa back in 2009 to play basketball at Oral Roberts University. So I studied there and I uh, wasn't really sure what I wanted to study when I first got there, but sophomore year I took a class on personal financial planning. And I described that to people as, as my Moses in the burning bush moment. It was at that point I thought, this is what I want to do. I want to help people with this. I want to help folks navigate a financial plan and work towards their goals. And ever since then, it's kind of been not a straight line journey, but that's been the path. Wow, that's a great story, Mikey. You know, we, we had been emailing back and forth, kind of preparing for this segment. You had so many great ideas. I just had to boil it down sure. to two, two sure. broad topics. Let's get into uh, behavioral finance first and then holistic financial plan. So, so behavioral finance, when we're talking about that, trying to plan our future, what do you mean by behavioral finance? Yeah, so I think a lot of folks come into developing a financial plan thinking through what are the tips and tricks I need to be aware of? What are, what are the bullet points of actions that I need to take? But I think where we need to start to create a more sustainable plan long term is actually figuring out what do I believe about money? What influences did I have growing up? Did my parents talk about money? Did they not talk about money? Uh, was it taboo to ask a buddy how much this cost? All of those things factor into the decision making and the and kind of the behavior we take financially even in our adult life so i always like to work with clients in the beginning to figure out you know what what was it okay to talk about how did your family feel about debt how did your family feel about wealth owning a business those types of things because that helps inform maybe where I need to spend a little bit more time focusing on unrooting maybe some poor beliefs mm -hmm. and unlocking what it is they really want to achieve long term. So maybe for some families, uh, parents, grandparents out there who don't really know maybe how to talk to their children about money, what is your recommendation based on your clients? Is it good to be really open with your kids with your money growing up? Absolutely. In your experience? Yeah, the, the vast majority of folks in my age demographic said they were told maybe one or two things. Hey, save, put money back. And that was it, just kind of blanket advice. So even if you're a little bit unsure as a parent right now, I would just start, meet your kids where they're at, talk through some of the decisions you're making in your adult life, because I am sure, I am positive, it is gonna factor in and filter down into their transition into adulthood and making decisions around money. That's really smart, that's really good. Also, you mentioned, uh, again, in our correspondence, in our emails, about a holistic financial plan. I usually think of holistic in terms of medicine, a holistic sure. medicinal approach. What does that mean to you, holistic financial plan? Absolutely, yeah, so the first piece of that is, is two-pronged. It's figuring out where you wanna go long-term. A lot of folks, again, will dive into creating a financial plan, hey, I have a 401k offered through my job, or I know I need to be putting this money back, and we just start with tactical moves. But Andy Stanley says it best, everyone ends up somewhere in life, a few people end up there on purpose, those are the ones with vision. That's so, so you have good. to start by having goals articulated. What is it that you wanna achieve? But then also doing the work of uncovering, where am I at right now? That's a point A, the vision is the point B. Now we can craft a, a plan and a strategy from one to the other. And then within that, I think the holistic part comes in, not just saving an investment, but also having a risk management and estate planning profile, because all of those things, insurance needs, wills, trusts, uh, my emergency savings account, my long-term retirement accounts, all of that factors into a good holistic financial plan. So we have to be aware of all of those components when we're building out something holistic. We've talked about estate planning on this program before. We had a legal expert in, and I know yeah. a lot of people watching are interested in that. The age at which you should start estate planning is when, would you say? It's a great question. I'm not sure how free I am in answering that because I am not an estate planning attorney, but what I typically tell my clients is, is the moment that someone else is relying on your income or 
or you have a significant asset like a home, mm. it's probably time to start that discussion with an estate planning attorney just to figure out, hey, is a will right for me? Is it time to maybe work towards a trust? And then w people like me can help bring in the financial elements to make sure it's structured the right way. And last thing, as people out there here maybe watching us are overwhelmed by inflation and what do I do with my money? It's not going as far <laughs> as I thought it would. Just your, your general advice and um, any comforting words to folks who are just really, I don't know what's happening right now. Absolutely. I mean, we've experienced times like this in the past historically. Like inflation has always been a thing. There's always been that eroding factor on money. Consistent invest investor behavior has always won over the long term. But the, the, the other thing to keep in mind and maybe an encouragement would be continue to save and have liquid funds available. I think that gives people a peace of mind knowing that, hey, if, if stuff hit the fan, if there was a little bit of a, a, a panic-stricken moment in my household, we have something to fall back on. So I encourage people to make sure they have those liquid emergency funds available to steady the ship and give them a peace of mind moving forward. Mikey Mangum with Inspire Financial Group. This was a real pleasure. Thank you, Mikey, and uh, welcome to the program. It was Thanks great having much. you great on. Great to be here.